As soon as my wife and I started dating, I was asked to be the best man in a wedding in Colorado. And this already created an obstacle in my very new relationship. This wedding is three months away. Will she still like me or want to be around me? I can't wait the three months to find out if she's sticking around or not. I have to ask right now so we can start booking our trip. Luckily for me, despite all the red flags I was giving her, Britta reluctantly agreed to go on this trip to Colorado with me. I was so excited as travel is one of my very favorite things and she had quickly become another. This was years ago when I wanted so badly to work for a church but could only find a part-time gig in ministry and was also working part-time as a bartender to make ends meet. I was not flush with cash to say the least. I got the airplane tickets and booked our hotels and when we finally got to Colorado and I got to our hotel, I found out I did not have the necessary funds to pay for our stay. It was super humiliating and I didn't want to scare her away. It was not a great way to start our trip off, let alone our forever relationship. So I did what any rational human would do. I hid in the bathroom and I called my mom to borrow money. Thankfully, we figured it out and Britta is still dealing with me to this day. Just don't tell Britta. The how of the story isn't really important for what we're talking about today. Have you ever been on a trip and not had the money to pay for it? Or even needed to put food on the table or pay rent and the funds just aren't around? I feel like this is so common and it is so humiliating and just plain miserable. Which brings me to another thing I question. I often wonder how Jesus was able to travel around the countryside preaching and still be able to afford food, lodging, and all of the other necessities of life. Yes, we can say, well, he is God and pretty hooked up as far as father figures go, but there's another story. Get this, the entire ministry of Jesus depended on one woman named Joanna. And to me, this story does not get told enough. Without this brave woman who was literally and figuratively bought into the mission and ministry of Jesus, we would not be having this conversation. She not only fed, supported, and fully funded Jesus, but his whole entourage. And you really have to pay attention when reading Luke to find her. Here it is in Luke 8. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured, Mary Magdalene and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. So did you catch that? Joanna, the wife of Chusa. If you are familiar with the time of Jesus, Herod, King Herod, hates Jesus. Herod's father hated Jesus. Herod was the king of Judea, appointed by the Roman Empire to rule over the Jews. And here was Jesus, king of the Jews. Naturally, there was a tension here. I would imagine that the court of Herod was keeping tabs on this Jesus figure, trying to find reason to lock him up. In fact, Herod's wife had John the Baptist, cousin of Jesus, beheaded. A little tense. So now we have established that Herod is the king of that part of the world. He obviously needed a department of treasury, someone to take care of the money, someone who takes the taxes from the Jews and puts it in Herod's bank. This guy, this guy's name was Chusa. So Chusa is in the is in the Herod camp, stealing money from the Jews and putting it in the bank. And now we get to Joanna. Joanna is Chusa's wife. And this is where it gets interesting. Joanna is funding the mission and ministry of Jesus, who is the enemy of King Herod. So Chusa in Camp Herod and Joanna in Camp Jesus, having a bank together and funding the mission of Jesus, the enemy of King Herod. Wow. The first time I heard this story, it blew my mind. I don't know about you, but I would not be caught dead with an enemy of my spouse, let alone give them our credit cards, 
Clearly, Joanna understood what Jesus was up to. Clearly, there was a relationship there. Clearly, Joanna knew that she was a child of God and that she was called to do her part, whatever means necessary. So today, as we close, I want to pray that we have the courage and feel the call to be like Joanna, to use our gifts and our talents, to, to use them to further the mission and ministry of Jesus in our church in our community, and in our world today. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this today, the Daily Dose Ministry, we would love, if you're on Facebook, to share and like this. If you're watching it on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching on TV, invite a f some friends and family to watch along with you. Thanks for joining us. God bless.